Yo, what's up you guys, it's Grim here, and welcome back to day 9 of the Redstone Academy. In the last episode, we went over pulse extenders. It ranges from very compact to uh, more large variants of pulse extenders, as well as the more advanced ones we actually went over in that episode, versus the phase 1 variants. I would definitely recommend watching that if you missed it, and the link to that video will be in the description below. In this episode, we will be going over T flip-flops. These can either be called toggleable flip-flops or TFFs in the Redstone technical community, but most people just call them T flip-flops, so get familiar with that name. Just a friendly reminder as well, the link to each world will be in the description of the respective video, meaning that day one will be in day one, and day two will be in day two, and so on. Just one last thing, this series is based upon the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft, and the results may vary between versions however the concepts do remain the same with all that being said let's just get right into it all right you guys so in front of me here i have the t flip-flop section of today's video now i'm not gonna lie i did go ahead and go around and uh i looked at a lot of videos a lot of different designs and none of these here are mine except for one and the reason being is because of bedrock edition mechanics so what i'm going to say is if you are in java edition all right and you're not watching this on the bedrock edition of minecraft you play the java edition there will be a video linked in the description below to mumble jumbles video on a bunch of t flip-flops now the reason why you shouldn't do this if you are on bedrock edition is because i went ahead and picked out uh quite a couple from his video actually and displayed them here and these all work in bedrock edition and all the rest that i'm not showing up uh, most likely work in java edition or they just do not work in bedrock edition at all but yeah i just want to get that out there that uh these designs were all you know compounded together i've really tried to pick out the best ones and i only put ones that work on bedrock edition in this video so go check out that video in the description if you're on java all right but with all that being said let's go ahead and get right into it so day nine t flip-flops what is a t flip-flop a t flip-flop also known as a toggleable flip-flop a toggle or a tff is a basic circuit that changes uh the circuit from off to on with the push of a button and then it will sustain that in that desired state meaning that if you press a button and you want it to be on it will stay on when you press a button instead of turning on and off with the button and if you want it off turn off with button and well i mean it, it just it won't turn back on all right so right here i have uh one, ones that i use quite a lot and these are your dispenser t flip-flops now there are more however these are the basic ones uh what's going on here is you have a bunch of droppers actually not dispensers you, you want to use droppers with these so uh with the the dropper t flip-flops this dropper right here these are all going into each other and then go into this hopper so what's going to happen is uh, the dropper either stays, I believe, in this one or this one, uh, if I'm thinking correctly. And when you press this button right here, it will power this one, and then it will also power this one at the same time, which will send it to the hopper. Then the hopper will send it downwards, and that will send it into this dropper where it will then stay. Now, since it is staying in this dropper right here, that means that the comparator will take an output. Now, you might want to put this into a repeater or something because it will give out a fairly weak output, or you can put it directly into a block like this and you will be fine. But it will give an output for as long as it's in here. And then when you press the button again, this dropper right here will get powered. And then this dropper right here will get powered, which will push the item from this dropper into this dropper, resetting it, meaning that this will turn off. And then you can do it all again. Now, let's see if that works. So it should turn on here. As you can see, it went from here and then to here and then to here. You're just going to need to trust me on this, right? And then I press the button again and it will go back into this dropper right here. All right, now between these two designs, the left one is definitely the more practical one. However, the one on the right here, uh, it, it's a bit safer of one that I'm going to be showing you later in the video. However, it's just not the best one you want to use. And I'm going to show you why, because the input over here, the item will always stay in this dropper or this dropper which means that the only droppers that you can take an output from are the bottom one here or the top one here and that's because this dropper is going into this one this one's going into this one and this one is going into the hopper which means that when you press a button this is going to shoot then this is going to shoot shooting into the hopper which will then transport it down into this dropper right here taking an output and then when you press a button again this one will activate then this one will activate shooting it up into this so let's see if that works as you can see, it comes around, it shows up down here. This comparator turns on, press it again, and it will show up in this dropper. All right, now the next one is one that I showed you guys earlier. This is the repeater T flip flop. It, uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and explain it again, but you know, stay with me. This one's a bit rough to, uh, a, a bit rough to explain. 
All right, so what's going on here? When you press this button, this uh, torch is going to turn off, right? So that is going to lead into this repeater, and then that is going to unlock this locked repeater. So what's going to happen then is this locked repeater is then going to power this block, which will turn this redstone torch off. Now, after that, this repeater is going to stay on, right? So then uh, keep in mind, this whole tick cycle is, you know, nearing its end, right? So then this will unpower, unpowering this. And before this repeater has a chance to unpower from its powered state, it will be locked again and it will be locked on, which will then lock the slide on. So if I press a button, that is exactly what should happen. As you can see there, like I explained, uh, I'm not going to explain it again because it's a lot, but if I press the button again, it's going to do the exact same thing where uh, basically this repeater gets locked just in time before it can actually change from powered to unpowered or unpowered to powered. All right, so the next uh, one I have for you here is a silent hopper T flip flop. Now this design, uh, there's there's a little bit more of a superior design later on, but it's, it's like slightly bigger. Um, the reason why this design is weird, okay, uh, I would not recommend using this with this like dispensers, droppers, anything like that. With with lamps or any stupid uh, redstone contraptions, yeah, this is fine. And the reason being is because it's going to do a little bit of a, a flash as the item goes back and forth, but it will inevitably always get uh, locked in the opposite hopper that it began in. And it it's a very simple circuit, just two hoppers going into each other, a piece of redstone, a torch, comparator. Uh, rest on lamp with a button right here and as always the the description it you know holds the download to the video if you want to get a closer look but uh that's really all that this one is so let's go on to the next one all right so this is the dispenser or the dropper clock that i was talking about when i said that uh they do get a little bit more advanced and this is like a higher risk but more compact uh dropper t flip-flop so what's going on here is it's it's the same as the last one over there except for we are missing this dropper instead because that dropper really is not needed if you think about it so we can what we can do is put a comparator on here instead and it's going to uh, go ahead in the exact same way i don't want to explain it again but this should shoot up into this hopper and actually now that i think about it it should just show up into this dropper all right and the comparator will take the output of this dropper right here now when you want to reset it this is where it gets a little risky you shoot the item out goes into this hopper it actually comes out so that it, it does have a chance to despawning but comes out shoots down here and then goes into here and then you can uh you know turn it on again and then you can turn it off again and so on now if you're wondering because you want to build it yourself yes this is an upwards facing dropper right here uh and the hopper is going into it all right now the next one i found here was a, a little bit of a funny one because i was really starting to get deep i was really digging trying to find stuff for the better condition and i found this one it was really cool i just want to throw it in here not that practical kind of practical actually it's not that bad this is a water dispenser tea flip-flop and i thought it was really cool because it used uh the filled non-stackable item uh, output which means if you have a non-stackable item in a dispenser it will give off an output of three if you have a stackable item just one it will give off an output of one meaning that as the bucket goes from filled to unfilled it will go from an output of three to one so right now we have the water bucket waterlogged in the staircase right here and if i press a button it will go ahead and pick it up turn into a non-stackable item inside of here giving off a stronger output and then obviously vice versa if you want to turn it off you can press a button i thought this was really cool i just want to show it off how creative you can actually get with these things and that they're actually still you know kind of practical all right now this is one that i made while i was really really scratching my head so this is a silent i'm just going to call it an advanced silent hopper t flip-flop because it's just a, a little bit more wiring onto the hopper key flip flop and honestly it might actually be a little bit smaller than that one if you think about it but what's going on here is this torch is powering this block up here which turns this off but leaves this powered up here right so what goes on is when i press this button right here uh this torch turns off like allowing this rest zone right here to turn off and then one tick later, this torch turns on, which will then lock the hoppers again. Well then, when the button actually turns off, this torch will then power up again, immediately turning this off. But since there's no tick on redstone, that redstone is going to stay lit up no matter what. So it, there's only going to be one point, one tick where the pulse is like, you know, the redstone is turned off. And that will be just enough to go ahead and shoot the atom from here to here. Then when you press the button again, it'll shoot from here to here. So let's see if that actually works. You press the button and it should work just like I said. Let me go and move the button up here actually. So press it, one tick pulse and move this way. Press it again, 
one tick pulse moves back and the thing about this one is it is completely silent and obviously uh you have the lever i mean do i really need to explain this one all right now for the end of this video these are my personal t flip flop picks so for the first one uh i just went ahead and put these in categories if it is nearby meaning that if it is an audible distance i am going to most likely use this one i might even use this one if it is out of distance just for the simple fact of how compact and quiet it is and you're not going to lose any items with it so this is one that i would use if you don't want to hear a clicking sound every single time that you use it with the droppers if it is unhearable or outside of uh, audible distance, I would highly recommend using this one. Make sure that you place the button on the correct dispenser. Uh, as always, check out the, the link in the video description, download the map, play around with it. But uh, this is the smallest one that you can make and it's risky, yeah, but it's also really quiet and it can just help out a lot. And the last one is just if you really, really don't need a fancy on and off button, like really think about it. Do you really need one of these? Or, or can you just use a lever? Like, do you actually need a fancy T flip flop or will a lever do? Okay, so this is a fancy door, okay? it You can use a lever for a fancy door unless you want to have a two way and then have a circuitry in the middle that will go ahead and compute that together and let you open or close it from either side and uh, go in and put a lock and blah, 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 so on. So you really have to just uh, make sure they actually need one of these before you put it in. All right, you guys, but that is going to wrap it up for this video today. If you did like the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you are new around here and you are new to this series, go ahead and subscribe. It means a lot. Now, as you guys know, I do put a lot of effort into these videos. I really want everyone to understand Redstone to the fullest. And I always just assume that everyone knows nothing so that we don't miss any core kind of information that you may need to know like in phase one if you are new here and you have watched this entire video but you haven't watched phase one yet go watch phase one it goes over all the basics and uh just a bunch of terminologies that you really need to know to understand this series but anyway like i said leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you are not and with all that being said i've been grim and i will see you in the next one peace out